progress is better than perfection if we're going to make any sort of meaningful inroads into the challenges that face us. I would really want to begin by saying that I really need to recognize my privilege and position, which as an architect really provides me a wealth of opportunities to make a real contribution. I think it's really important to continue to be both student and educator, try to learn what I can from a diversity of sources, and then share what I learn and advocate for change within my realm of influence. So at the end of the day, I really want it, my impact story to be that I contributed in a meaningful way to build an inclusive, equitable communities and also respect and protect the biodiversity of our planet. From my perspective as an architect, we can really get caught up in the net zero decarbonization equation. How are we going to administer it? How do we calculate it? What is it gonna cost? But we tend to struggle with really finding opportunities for truly regenerative design. And that is really about how we're supporting the biodiversity of the regions where we're building. How are we supporting our communities? Not only with the jobs that our clients and industry bring, but also creating spaces that allow for community engagement and enrichment, ensuring that we're addressing inclusivity and accessibility, and making sure we're creating healthy well being for everyone. So, my vision is about focusing on positive contributions rather than simply trying to mitigate negative actions. I want to reflect on the communities that I've helped to design and build, and I want to know that those communities have been positively impacted by those designs. I want to make sure that the environment that I live in and design for is a beneficial contribution to society as a whole, not at the expense of others. So I really think advocating for sustainable and equitable design within the real estate sector is an important component to achieving those goals. I really think that we need leadership at all levels within our organizations. And that means from our executive management teams who are setting overall goals and objectives to the project management teams who are really executing the work in the projects through to our new hires, whose voices are really being heard louder than ever. Obviously, governmental support is needed financially and regulatory, but I think we've wasted enough time waiting on government to do what needs to be done. And I think the innovators and the solution providers, they're gonna be coming from private enterprise. I like to take a positive approach to thinking about what if, what if, but you know, mainly working with engineers in my profession, I've learned that I need to temper my big ideas with some common sense and practical solutions as much as possible. And I've really found that you're going to lose people's interest very quickly if you're wearing blinders and are only focused on a certain outcome rather than trying to understand people and come up with solutions together. I really do try to think and act ethically and fairly when I'm making decisions both within my personal and professional life. I really do try to be as empathetic as possible and try to anticipate any consequences of my actions to make sure that we are really addressing the broader audience rather than just my immediate circle. And I recognize that this is a continuing learning process, but it's really necessary to try to expand my frame of reference. I typically find myself out of my comfort zone quite often, but I've really learned that I need to make sure that I am out of my comfort zone in order for me to learn and grow personally and professionally. And I think as professionals in our respective fields, we're positioned as solution providers for our clients and stakeholders, but we need to get comfortable with asking questions and acknowledging that we don't have all the answers because really the best solutions tend to be collaborative. I really do have some great allies with my colleagues that I work with from our CEO all the way down to some of our newest colleagues, Gen Zs. I love them. They are really unafraid to voice their values and I encourage everyone to follow their lead because I find that employers or companies are hearing their voices and they're starting to make changes because this is a very competitive market out there for talent. 
Don't be afraid to voice your values. Talk about the projects that you want to work on and the organizations and how you want them to behave. Start with a few goals and objectives that you can influence and measure and just focus on continuous improvement. Climate change, sustainability, ESG, these are complex global challenges and we can really paralyze ourselves just trying to come up with the right solutions. Make sure you're tracking, you measure, you're mindful of potential consequences, but you've got to keep in mind that progress is better than perfection if we're going to make any sort of meaningful inroads into the challenges that face us. I think CISL has really been a gateway for expanding my knowledge, as well as my community of passionate people that are all working towards a common goal. I find it's a struggle to always be advocating for change, but it is encouraging to know that I can tap into such a vast network of expertise and diverse perspective. I think at the last count, there were about 27,000 others within the CISL network that are pushing for change, and that is really encouraging and bolstering. It doesn't make you feel like you're alone. I'm continually in awe of the brain power from all over the world working towards this extremely complex but common goal that we all share.